teachers, beings we learn from. They are everywhere and always have been. They may be role models, guideposts, friends, and or sources of inspiration. They may also be creators of obstacles, hardship, and disturbances. Regardless of the form they take or the amount of time they spend in our lives, we frequently take them for granted, like or dislike them, accept or dismiss them, and then move on when they're gone. But the effects they've had on us, the lessons beyond the barriers to which they've led and then pushed us through, remain with us, stepping stones on the paths of our lives. I share this having recently read of an ancient road that was uncovered during the construction of a subway in Thessaloniki, Greece's second largest city. The marble paved road was built by the Romans as the city's main artery of travel 2,000 years ago. It got me thinking about some of the now seemingly ancient roads I've traveled in my almost 70 years and the people on those roads who have taught me my most significant lessons. Too numerous to mention more than just a small few here, some are. Johnny Look, who beat me up in a schoolyard fight I picked when I was about 15 years old. He taught me the important lesson of how easily I bleed when punched in the mouth, literally and figuratively. Mr. Irwin Wolfson a junior high school English teacher whose passion for Shakespeare taught me not to be afraid to read writing I couldn't easily understand. Richard Brodigan, whose sweetly inventive, critics said childishly hippie writings, were my first exposure to what I now see were oddly spiritual sensibilities. Never had I read anyone with such wild imagination poignant use of metaphor and offbeat understatement. While I never got to meet him and have, following his suicide, come to understand what a tortured being he was, his ability to see and communicate unconventional perspectives has graced my thinking for years. Arnold Zeidel, who I met while hitchhiking across the country in 1971 and who, while sitting around a late night campfire at the Grand Canyon, introduced me to Eastern thought by handing me a recently published book called Be Here Now. Martin Fierro, a real life bodhisattva, Armed with a tenor saxophone and a truly sweet heart, Martin lovingly did his work in the guise of an Apache-born, clownishly irreverent musical genius. Ken Rinpoche Lama Lundrup, the abbot of Kopan Monastery in Kathmandu, Nepal. A human mirror who through his quiet smile allowed me to see, perhaps for the first time, what a Prada-esque character I was capable of being. People from various times in my life, completely different from one to another, and precious teachers all. We've all had teachers. Even the greats were taught and influenced by others. It's said that Hemingway studied Turgenev, Socrates mentored Plato, Thoreau loved Homer, Welty was inspired by Chekhov. Faulkner claimed a debt to Joyce. Willie Mays idolized Jackie Robinson. Garcia was influenced by Joan Baez. Stella Adler mentored Brando. Woody taught Arlo, as did Pete Seeger. Marcel Duchamp influenced Warhol. Trungpa taught Ginsburg. Oliver Wendell Holmes deeply influenced Felix Frankfurter, who then mentored Justice John Harlan. Father Michael Vanderpeet mentored Mother Teresa. James Brown was said to have taught Michael Jackson how to dance. The numbers and flavors of relationships between those who influence and those who are influenced are endless. 
In the Buddhist systems where teachers are identified and deeply appreciated, my eyes and ears have been opened widely by the teachings of Siddhartha, Tupten Geshe, Chogyam Trungpa, Shanti Deva, Dilgo Kayense, Kalu Rinpoche, Nagarjuna, and Tsongkhapa, to name just a few. And of course, humanity's current professor, His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama of Tibet. And there are many beings regarded as more ordinary both before and since I've been exposed to the fertility of the Buddhist teachings. I can now see them all as my teachers, presenting opportunities for me, sometimes forcibly against my stubbornness to learn and grow. They've been of all sizes, ages, colors, faiths, political persuasions, sensibilities, and inclinations. They include humans, animals, insects, all teachers, and of course, inanimate objects as well. Anyone who has wandered through an ancient redwood grove or quietly merged with the environment while witnessing sunrise over an ocean horizon or gazed at the rings of Saturn through a telescope or at a drop of blood through a microscope will understand this. This perspective, the recognition of all these people and things as teachers has taken me years to see and with understanding acknowledge. What a profound gift to see our teachers everywhere. It is endlessly rich and paves the way for true humility appreciation and gratitude while keeping us open to absorb and learn from everyone and everything whose path I cross. This may be true for you also, so I leave you with a suggested perspective to explore. If you're one who's inclined to be listening to this, I suspect it will not be a waste of time. Look at all the people in your life from years ago and those who are present now, include those very close to you and ones not so close. Include friends and enemies and those who are in between, the neutrals. Try to clear your mind of feelings of lingering attachment and or aversion and ask yourself, with as honest and open a heart as you can, what has this person taught me? How have they influenced me? What are they helping me to learn now? How have they, whether intentionally or not, created the conditions in which I was or am enabled or forced to grow, to evolve? Allow what arises in your mind to do so without judgment, just the facts. You will find that you've had and still have boundless teachers and perhaps with this new introspection, you will experience the clarity to see and appreciate them in a more significant and empowering way. Empowering because it is quite possible this appreciation will lead to humility and then to gratitude. And that gratitude will become a wish to settle any long-standing debts, to balance the ledger, to repay them for all they've led you to learn. This payment won't be with money or material goods, but rather with the very thing their teachings have led you to, your very best self, by becoming, with the best interests of others in mind, a more mindfully beneficial and well-meaning influence on all whom you encounter. In this way, you'll become an increasingly conscious teacher yourself, a role that, when honestly embodied, will be quite comfortable and feel intuitively right. And you will, therefore, do it very well. This recording, Teachers Are Everywhere, was written and shared here by Mark Winwood. Mark, that's me, is an adjunct instructor of meditation psychology 
at Naropa University in Boulder, Colorado, and the founder of the Chenrizig Project, a Tibetan Buddhist study and practice group currently resident in Colorado and with a national online presence. You can learn more about the Chenrizig Project at www.chenrizigproject.org. That's C-H-E-N-R-E-Z-I-G project.org. Our accompanying music, titled Because, was composed and performed by our collaborator, the San Francisco Bay Area musician Bobby Vega. It appears on his 2017 album, Matters of the Heart, which features intimate solo compositions performed on his acoustic bass guitar. You can learn more about Bobby and his music at his website, www.bobbyvega.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-V-E-G-A.com. Or, as he's very findable online, you can simply Google his name or look for his numerous videos on YouTube. We remain grateful to Bobby for his friendship, his talents, and his generosity in sharing his beautiful music with our Dharma audience. Please feel free to share the link to this podcast with those you feel it might resonate, including those you consider to be your teachers. And as always, thank you for listening.